Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of this year's YDA Week interviews. Today we'll be asking Martin Werner six things about himself. Martin is one of the most respected directors in the industry, having worked on scores of campaigns, many of them award-winning, over the course of his career. He started out as a first AD before moving into directing in the mid-90s and has gone on to direct work for clients including Coca-Cola, Audi, Carlsberg, Heineken, BT, Ikea, and among his many awards has won the Grand Prix at New York Film Festivals, Eurobest and Epica. In 2001, he set up commercial production company Bacon, and he works across a multitude of genres, making it near impossible to pigeonhole him. And his work with star-studded talent, including, including George Clooney, Benicio Del Toro and Christopher Walken, as well as sports stars such as Nico Rosberg, Rio Ferdinand and Thierry Henry. Over the next 20 minutes, Martin discusses the films which inspired him to become a director, the biggest challenges he's, challenges he's faced through his career, and the piece of advice all aspiring directors should bear in mind. Um, okay, so here we are with Martin Werner. Thank you so much for joining us, Martin. It's great to have you on the YDA um, podcast. And so, as you know, we're here to talk uh, to you about six things about you. And hopefully we're going to learn a bit about you, about your process, about your background and your inspirations. So the first question really is, can you tell us about the film uh, that inspired you uh, to want to be a director? Well, I mean, I would have to mention a few. Um, I think the first films that popped up to my mind, uh, thinking back on what inspired me was uh, Scorsese's Reagan Bull and, and Taxi Driver, uh, Michael Cimino's The Deer Hunter and, um, and, and Kubrick's uh, The Shining, although I'm not really fond of horror as such. But I guess those four films like kind of um, are the essence of, of why I got attracted to movie making because mm. of their dramatic and emotional kind of uh, haunting nature. nature. Really, so they had an impact on you. It's interesting because they're quite obviously powerful and and serious films. But you know, a lot of your work is is not quite as like that. It's which is which is why if I was to mention, uh, you know, um, commercials or someone who who really caught me, it it, it would be uh, the Swedish director Johan Kamitz, who unfortunately died in in two thousand in a in a tragic accident. In yeah. New York. but he. Uh, you know, inspired me from a different angle. Uh, I think he revolutionized uh, advertising when he really blossomed uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, funny, sympathetic, um, still really visually profound and, and, and creative work. Um, so you're right, like the, 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 the movies that I, I tend to like are, are probably darker and harder than, than what inspires me when it comes to advertising, which, which fundamentally is because advertising has to, it doesn't have to, but uh, it, it often is a positive standpoint. It wants to convert something negative into something positive yeah. where movies doesn't have to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you're still a big Scorsese fan, are you? You still sort of look forward to seeing? Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, again, you know, there is, uh, what, what's, uh, apart from the fact that he's done some of the, the best movies, I think, and he still does, uh, you know, he's a, he's an old guy now, but he still shines and he still comes uh, uh, very enthusiastic yeah. uh, into every film that he does yeah. in, in the age of whatever. Yeah. And when you so when you were watching those films, I don't know what sort of age you were, but when you first saw them and first got inspired by those movies, did you at that point have in your head, this is something I want to do? I want to know how to be a, a film director. I, I want to do what what these films do and, and make people feel the way these films have made me feel. Back then, you know, it wasn't it wasn't. I mean, there was VHS cameras around, and my parents had those in their clinic. They are both. Uh, psychologists and they had a private clinic at our house and 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 so it was kind of uh i knew the cameras from 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 our house they were in the ceiling at where they did their their therapies and so there was it was kind of weird because i you know looking at the television going to cinema and then knowing that that those cameras that were quite pricey back then i could do my own stuff with them so so um and then I started to watch their videotapes, uh, which I was not allowed to do. And I saw these incredible, 
one shot scenarios where my parents were doing therapy with a couple or individual and and I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. So I, I also realized that something could be so simple mm. and still uh, like quite haunting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we've talked a bit about the the films, the movies that inspired you. What about the commercials? So when you, um, either before you started in your career or, or as, you, as you had started, were there commercials that you looked at that you thought, well, wow, you know, again, similar to the, to the movies, that's really inspiring and, and makes me want to do, um, you know, work in that arena or kind of do the work that those people are doing? It's almost like a no-brainer to mention um, Jonathan Glacier's Surfer, but, but for sure that film and, and I'd say the body of his work uh, yeah. still stands for me as some of the most iconic commercials ever made. Um, and uh, I think it was a mix between, uh, you know, obviously the way he tells stories and, and, and so for the way, the way that story was told, uh, the post-production of that film, the, the visual impact, the uh, connection to the product and the, the surprising nature of, of how he put things together, the, the, the sound design, everything. So uh, what I've always found very inspiring about Glazer's work is that it combines all the best elements of movie making and filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's think- based timeless, you know, it's, 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 it's like you can still watch, uh, I, I guess Jonathan's reel, I haven't done for a while, but I would imagine that if I saw it, I would still feel it's one of the best reels that exists. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do, do you feel that commercials and the industry and the clients enable work like that to be made still i mean that's what i don't know how old that commercial is 20 odd years old so you know but everyone still well not everyone but certainly a lot of people do reference that because it rightly so because it's an amazing piece of work uh, but do you think there are things that have come after the fact that after that and that kind of compare to that and, and do you know if not why not but in a way, you could say it's not really the industry's uh, responsibility to make things like that happen. It's right. our responsibility. And, and okay. in that way, what we often say in the company I'm in is that there's not really any bad scripts, but there's bad solutions. Um, okay. Which, of course, are hardcore truths, and it puts pressure back at us as filmmakers. Um, right now, uh, you know, uh, one tendency is you need to do more and more work that has to, uh, you know, uh, uh, appeal to a, a global audience, which can be yeah. relatively demanding because there's so many different cultures to capture and to, to reach. Uh, and, and on the other hand, local budgets are going down tremendously. But really, the lack of money, although I shouldn't say that, is not and should not, and is, you know, a, 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 you know sometimes a, the, the limitations of no money can be extremely creatively yeah. stimulated. Yeah. So I would say that, that, that it's kind of just mourning and, and being, uh, uh, you know, sentimental to say that, that, that the industry has gotten worse. I don't think so. No, okay. But do you think that the, the kind of, I don't know, the creative uh, bravery maybe of... Um, brands has kind of gone down slightly you know the surfer is an unusual and kind of strange approach for a commercial and you know obviously yeah. there's many stories been told about it how it was kind of you know written off to a large degree at first but uh, before it was released but do you, so do you think that clients need to sort of try and grasp that creative nettle a bit more ideally well it's our job it's it's the at world's duty to promote and to sell and the problem or challenge really with social media which has a lot of advantages is that if you do a single small mistake if you if you play if you you know if you are are you know taking chances a a a, a, a miss mistake can certainly be you know yeah. lethal for a for a brand and that obviously uh, means that that we or or you know um, the media doesn't dare to take the same chances, and we have to take chances. It's the same in art world, mm. where in a way you're protected because you're an artist, so therefore you can you know it's okay you're crazy and you do crazy stuff. Um, but in in the ad world, we are not really allowed to be off or odd or provocative the same way as before. Yeah because we certainly harm those who hire us. Yeah, it's that balance of art and commerce, I suppose, that is always the case within advertising. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know. Um, yeah. 
So, so uh, the freedom of speech in advertising is 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 is, is in, a, in a in a in a tricky place uh, for good and for worse. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me uh, ask you now about the person in the industry that you most look up to. Who 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 would that be? Or or people, if there's more than one. Well, I mean, luckily, I work uh, together uh, at Bacon with quite a lot that I really admire and feel are doing profound, um, iconic work. But but one that pops to my mind is a guy that I had the pleasure of meeting in Copenhagen. He came in state with us for a while some years ago, Jonas, uh, uh, Spike, Spike Jones. Ah. And, 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 you know, apart from being an, an incredible persona, uh, I think Spike is one of the few or one of those who have transcended from music videos and commercials into long form yeah. uh, and creating impeccable and iconic work on all platforms. Mm. Um, uh, and uh, even when he uh, rarely, which happens, comes back to advertising, uh, you know, he still makes work that that um, inspires all of us. So, so he is, uh, you know, I, I mentioned the sofa uh, from yeah. Glacier, but a film like The Lamp that he did yes. many years ago, is 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 very dear to me because it, it's it's um it's 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 emotionally really captivating but also super funny at the same time yeah that's a fantastic piece of work that i remember when that won the grand prix I, again i can't remember exactly when in the, i guess the early to mid 2000s and it was sort of roundly sort of appreciated yeah. that it was an, an unusual choice but a brilliant choice at the same time so yeah what is it about spike then do you think that kind of sets him apart and, and and I guess what is it about a director if you can even put your finger on that that means you, that it makes you capable of moving from commercials to music videos to feature films and back again you know is there something you need to have to kind of make that transition fairly seamlessly back and forward it's so hard to answer it's also like with DPs you 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 they have the same lenses they have the same location they have the same camera and it just looks different yeah um uh, and and um uh you know what's the price of a horse it's really hard to say uh, and 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 why is spike so good uh why does someone I think Jerry Seinfeld said, uh, you know, uh, everybody knows the fastest man on the planet. If, you know, he's just, he, everybody will say his name. The second fastest, no, nobody heard about him. Right. And why is he the fastest, uh, 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 that guy? And why is Spike so good? Um, but I guess it, it, trying to answer your question, uh, um, it, it has to do with his... Um, uh, passionate desire to tell a personal and and uh to to give the audience an experience to reward them uh giving them a minute out of the 30 seconds that he showed and and um and on top of that just uh having a really brilliant mind and really impeccable tastes yeah you know, the yeah. DP once said to me if you put shit in front of the camera all you get is shit yeah so so he is able to put things in front of the camera and put it together in in a very uh, uh, you know unique way. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And so let's move on to so question four is um, the project you've worked on that's posed the biggest challenge for you. What what over your, the course of your career has been the biggest challenge on the from a commercial point of view? I think it's so difficult to make any project, uh, like everything, even those where I feel this is a, a no-brainer, it never becomes a no-brainer. Uh, although my commitment is to go in and do stuff uh, with positive energy, I kind of learned that uh, growing slightly sour at some stage, I realized that it's kind of ridiculous to do commercial work and then feel sad or frustrated about it. Right. But it is sometimes extremely difficult and, and frustrating. Um, uh, a project like the the, the 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 spots I did with Christopher Walken was very difficult, although it was it, you know because uh, you know quite fundamentally they mention uh, uh, made from cool, and if you say cool in a commercial, or if you say I'm cool. You are doomed to be the opposite. Right. Okay. So it was very difficult to to obey and try to make something cool when yeah. that word was mentioned. Yeah. 
Um, but he was super cool and, and, and all the efforts we put into it, but it was difficult. So, so uh, I think it's, that's what's wonderful about filmmaking. It is, it's, 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 it's never uh, a, a walk in the park. It's, it's, yeah. um, it's hard work. Like you say, I mean, it, it helps when you've got Christopher Walken in your ad, if you're talking about call, I mean, that's sort of, he's pretty it, much. It, that, that's the power of celebrities and especially someone like he'd never done a commercial when we did it. So it was quite special that we got the chance to do it. Uh, um, but, but especially when you work with famous people, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you hire them because then they're there but it's it's never really enough you can't yeah. really just profit from from their fame you have to give them something to work with yeah and but that was difficult because he he had to do so little yeah yeah just had to be christopher walken yes and, <laughs> and, an expert. and, and so i'm actually I'm, I'm 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 talking with two tongues here but 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 you know the whole and, and, you know, the post elements in that film, the whole idea was to profit from the character he is, but to make him into a tailor and a different yeah. character. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but, but man, it's just so difficult. And, and, yeah. and, 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 uh, and you never really know. Yeah. But do, but do you sort of, uh, you know, you, you cling on to the challenge? Do you enjoy the challenge? I mean, if a project is, if a project is just straightforward and completely unchallenging from start to finish, is that a good project or do you quite like having sort of problems to solve? I mean, you know, it's easy for me to say, Oh, it must be fun solving problems from the outside. I'm not the one who's got to solve them, but you know, do, does that make it a bit more, I guess, um, you know, at the end of the day, you feel a bit prouder about having completed a project if there were certain challenges you had to overcome during it. I think us humans, like we in order to organize all this chaos, we want to say black and white, right? Bald with hair, tall, and then then put things into uh, categories so we have stuff under control, you know. Yeah. And the same with directors, you know. Ah, he's good at comedy. He's good at uh, at visual stuff. He's he's dark. He's yeah. he, he's he's quirky, whatever. And I always wanted to try to separate myself from being labeled like that mm -hmm. um, which is which is which is it's difficult because uh, you know the, the the industry and people wants to label you um uh so so uh you know i think as as long as you um as long as you are super inspired about something, whether it's uh, the color of something or the nature of of the genre or whatever uh that is what's important to me yeah uh, that i'm that i'm there with the with the you know enthusiasm yeah yeah and, and that i'm still trying to be humble to the subject matter yeah yeah do you immediately know like when you receive a script when you look at that do you immediately know this is this is something i can do this is something that you, like you have a visceral reaction to in it the, in the beginning and when i was lucky to win awards and stuff it was all about is this uh you know it's it's like you said is it for the real, for the meal, you know, <laughs> and it had to be for the real. That was my commitment with my partners at Bacon. It had right. to be for the real. But I actually don't really think about awards uh, uh, like that anymore. Mm. Uh, uh, I, I allow myself to to get inspired by uh, a location, yeah, uh, you know, a a a product that I find clever. And then get my round. As I said, I don't really think there's bad scripts, but because you can turn a really uh, shitty scripts into something interesting if you yeah. allow yourself and then of course you either get hired or fired right 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 it's interesting yeah and so we talked about challenges but what about the project that you're most proud of over the course of your career I mean you've worked on a lot of stuff and you've um, you know won a lot of awards and and you know you've worked for a, you, you've had have a long and storied career so what of the work that you put out there are you you most proud of well, I, I, I am luckily proud of a few things. Uh, mm -hmm. one, one, one campaign that, that I am quite proud of is a, a campaign I did in Sweden uh, for IKEA. Uh, mm -hmm. The creatives and I worked uh, for the course of six years, I think, and we did more than 20 commercials together and, and all of them I'm proud of. And, and, and they were kind of a, an attempt that the tagline was uh, where life happens. Yeah, right. and, and and they were small stories about individuals, people, families, relations, um, 
and we took up subject matters that 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 mattered in Sweden at the, at the time. Um, the campaign stopped uh, uh, because everything stops at some point, um, and, and and the smart thing was it stopped before it got boring. Yeah. But I, I I'm very proud of that campaign, and I learned a lot about how to condense something quite emotionally difficult to 60 and even 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I would probably mention that, but it's more because it's rare you get to work with someone, the same people, the same client over the course of many years, and you really profit from the learnings and the collective uh, uh, energy. Yeah, yeah. When you talk about learning, it's interesting. Do, do you feel, I mean, we talked about the fact that you've, you've you know, directed so many commercials, award-winning commercials, but do you feel like you're still learning? I mean, young directors, obviously, you know, the young directors is about that, young directors to a large degree. And there's an expectation, even me, that someone like you must know everything. You know, there's every, you, you've, been, you've done it all, you've been there, you've seen it. But do you feel like every project teaches you something or certainly most projects teach you, teach you something or, or is there nothing left to teach Martin Werner? <laughs> there was a really funny or interesting interview with Anthony Hopkins uh, where he's asked about being the Pope. Yeah. In, in that movie. Um, I can't remember the name of the movie, but, but he's talking about uh, how he knows absolutely nothing, uh, you know, and, and in a way, uh, I, what I love about this is that 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 uh, although you gather a lot of experience and you profit from that and you definitely come in more, you know, with some kind of self confidence, uh, you still are really um, uh, left in the dark uh, on every project. Yeah. And I think it's important you 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 are that. And I and I guess that that um, the moment where you just feel this is easy you you that's why you get thrown away mm, mm, mm. Um, so so i've got a lot to learn and i i, I you know i you know i i'm sure everybody who just had success with something uh are already on to the next yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes really difficult to uh feel uh proud i remember when we started our company we were working with the with the biggest company back then and they were so good and won so many awards and they were never opening a bottle of champagne and we promised ourselves to celebrate our victories every single time they occurred. right right and we do that you know we we, we really try to remind ourselves when something fantastic happens to yeah. one of us it's important to do that though isn't it i mean it's important to to celebrate those victories it's sure. because then suddenly you you know it's just over and you never yeah. really uh, had fun enjoying with... the moment yeah, yeah 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 that's interesting so look the the last question on the list of our six things about you is the the piece of filmmaking advice that you you were given that you would pass on to to the next generation of filmmakers is there something that you were told uh, whether you were young or, or sort of slightly older, that you would pass on to to, to young directors now. I mean, the, the funny thing about this young and old, which is of course um, interesting when you are old and when you have, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, I think that. I, when I turned 40, I, I, I was concerned. I remember that clearly about whether, you know, when it would end. And I saw huge directors that were shooting amazing jobs. And then two months later, they were gone and they never came back. So I felt that this is just like in football, like there's a certain age and then you stop and your career is over. And I was wondering, is that now? When is that going to happen? Uh, what I feel also being part of a, a production company is that it's, it's actually not the industry that will fire you and throw you out. It's, it's, it's yourself. You are responsible of your relevance to a marketplace. Yeah. And it was very clear to me when I then ran into trouble some years ago and felt, do I really need to sit here in, in my age and watch casting um, that it's a fundamental part of a director's work is to watch the casting and to be enthusiastic about it. Um, like the Japanese says, hard to get on top, harder to stay on top. Yeah. 
so um, the the advice that I think is is really important is not to think too much about uh, whether you're too young or too old, but to constantly be uh, inspired, to be humble, to be enthusiastic, and to take chances. And 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 the minute you're suddenly feeling that you are uh, just shooting on the back of your uh, spine and you think you've got it figured out, you, you should take a break. Right. And you really rewind and get back to that place where you feel vulnerable. If you can do that, I think you can keep, I mean, look at Martin Scorsese, he's, mm. he's shooting still on a major scale and he's, uh, Clint Eastwood is still out there, you know. Yeah. So you, and I think in commercials, you have a tendency to think that you, you can't, exceed a certain age but i i know directors that are, are super old and are doing beautiful work yeah. but it only is because they are uh you know uh alert and inspired. Yes. so it's so all it probably, kind of combines the two things you just said it's almost like celebrate the victories when you do achieve success but but don't rest on those laurels you know yeah. keep keep plugging away and keep learning and keep going and you know and, and that's what the great directors do and continue to do yeah, I mean, if you're so stupid that you've chosen to do commercials for a living, then then <laughs> then, then embrace it and and get the max out of it instead yeah. of mourning it or, or feeling that you should do fiction or you should be a carpenter. Yeah, yeah. You do what you do and, and and do it with pride. Brilliant. Well, that seems like a, a an absolutely perfect way to end that. Do what you do and do it with pride. So, Martin, thank you so much for talking to us. It's really interesting and inspiring to hear your thoughts. And um, thank you so much and look forward to talking to you again. Thank you, Danny.